I'm Steph. And I'm Jeff. Each week, we review a film that's streaming online. As writers, we'll deep dive into the characters and plot to tell you if it's a good story. Listen at your own risk. This review contains spoilers. Now sit back. Relax. And and enjoy enjoy Stream On. Today, we'll be reviewing Fury of the Demon, streaming on Amazon Prime. In this mockumentary, film pioneer Georges Méliès, or one of his disciples, made a cursed film. Whenever it is played, the crowd goes mad. Fury of the Demon was written and directed by Fabian Delage. It's a 2017 mockumentary film about George Méliès and has horror overtones to it. The film stars as themselves Alexander Asia as a French film director, Christophe Gaines as another French film director, and Pauline Méliès, who is the great-great-granddaughter of George Méliès. So Jeff, you picked this one. Why did you pick it? So this movie combines a number of things I really like. I enjoy mockumentaries. I like cursed film stories. I like secret history stories where we find out that the world isn't what we think it is, that there's this true reality underneath ours. And I just like film history. And this short movie combines all of those things i guess the real question we're going to answer though is does it do it well okay well that's a great segue into our plot analysis so jeff this is your choice for film so i'll let you go first as a writer what are your thoughts about did the film do its job to tell a compelling story i think it did now When you say compelling story, though, in a mockumentary, there can be a different standard than what you'd see in a normal fictional narrative. Part of mockumentaries, whether they are films, books, whatever, is to maintain an air of reality, that everything that is happening in the context of that film is what is real even if it's something fantastic, like in this case, a lost film that drives people mad. The movie does a very good job of that. This really has the look and feel of an actual documentary. It does a good job of integrating actual footage from some of Millier's films with some footage and images and excerpts from newspapers and the like that were created for this movie. So there's a seamlessness there that at no point does the movie seem to drop out of reality. That is a very important part of doing this style of film. And the best movies in this genre, movies like Punishment Park or This is Spinal Tap, which are two very different films as far as the tone and you know what they're going for. The one is kind of a sci-fi political thriller. This is Spinal Tap is one of the funniest movies ever made. But those movies also keep you immersed in this world. You never get dropped out of it. And as far as this film, I also think that you're never dropped out of the reality they're creating. Now, my question to you is first, would you agree with that? And the other question is, do you like these kind of movies? So starting with your second question, do I like mockumentary style movies? I generally do. This is Spinal Tap, Best in Show, stuff like that is great. Love that. Good humor, funny, uh, or even like horror mockumentaries. There are some good ones out there, but this film I did not enjoy. And I, I think the problem I have with this is that I felt a bit tricked. I went into this thinking it was a horror mockumentary and my expectation for a horror film is that I am going to get some jump scares or it's going to be if it's not a jump scare type film then there's going to be more like 
of a gruesomeness to it, or there, there's something that is going to make me feel like it's a horror film. I felt like I was just watching a documentary on the life and films of George Melies, which is not what I signed up for. I signed up for a horror film. And I think that's what really bothered me about this is that I didn't get what I was looking for out of this film. It had a promising opening. I'll give it that about the whole idea of like this lost film collector who likes to collect obscure early films found this lost film and a bunch of cinephiles are going to watch it and it's the first time ever seen and the film is called fury of the demon the lost film and and that you know something goes wrong and people get hysterical when they see this film like to me that's an interesting opening but the story doesn't go anywhere from there in terms of an arc like it's just interviewing a bunch of people about what they think uh, why this film causes people to go mad we never actually get to see this lost film called fury of the demon that's disappointing because you wait the whole movie and you don't see it and nor do we see anything horrific happen we just see interviews upon interviews um and I was like, where is the punchline? There's, I didn't really feel there was much arc to this story. So you're looking for more of a traditional narrative. Right. Have you ever seen the Masters of Horror episode, Cigarette Burns? I have not. You might like that a bit more because it takes this idea and creates a regular horror movie out of it. The one thing I disagree with is the lack of any scenes from the film being a problem. I've seen a number of these movies where they're supposed to be a cursed film, and usually if they show it, it never lives up to the mystery that they're creating around this cursed item. But not showing the movie, you can't be let down by what they're showing. Because what they'd show is probably, let's just say they had decided we're going to put some clips from this into our mockumentary, well, it's going to be some guy running around on the stage with a demon costume on or something. It's not going to look as good as whatever you can fill in with your mind. Well, the ring shows it, right? And that's creepy when you actually see the video of the creepy girl in the well. I guess I didn't find the actual f cursed film in either Ring or Ringu to be that disturbing. Most of these films about cursed movies... The idea is that there is some supernatural power connected to them, something that affects people in a way that just the images might not. I still say with this film, though, by not showing it, it just gets around the issue of, well, is the film they're going to show actually scary? Or is it going to be like the other movies that Millier actually made, which are technically neat. You can see why people look at him as the father of you know, the cinema of the fantastic. I completely understand what you're saying, though, about the idea that there is not a story arc here this is literally people just kind of talking about a movie there is no wrap-up the film ends with them basically saying well this you know this movie seems to have this effect but we don't know where it is and it is just a bunch of talking heads for the most part exactly and i think why i wanted to see the actual film is it would have given me something that i could like sink my teeth into to give this film more make it more interesting or give it substance if you're not going to show the film itself and create the mystique of that sometimes it's scary or what happens off screen versus on which is a valid point then i needed something else so you could have fleshed out some of your characters like maybe follow a few of the viewers that were in the theater when that film was shown and had that mass hysteria episode like Follow them and what's happening to them. Creepy things start happening to them. Maybe there's some that have untimely deaths or possession or something interesting. Like intersperse that in with your interviews to give the story more flavor and have a plot of I care about what happens to these couple of viewers uh, and why things aren't going so well for them after watching this film. Or another thing you could have made this is a found footage and then things then you're like going back, right? To see what's happening to people um, in their last days. Uh, found footage ones are always a, a nice twist on this idea. But because there was, they didn't do any of that. There was no character development. It 
it just felt I was watching a fake documentary versus a horror film. And to me, that wasn't that interesting. I went into this knowing I was looking at a mockumentary that was going to give some actual background on the seminal figure in film history that would touch on the ideas of, you know, lost films. And that's a real thing. There are a lot of movies that have been lost to history. Some that exist only like as a review in a newspaper or maybe a still or something that has survived. And it plays off of the whole secret history idea that there's something beneath the surface of cinema, something more powerful, like this viral idea that cinema can infect people. I understand that if you went into this expecting a horror movie, and whether you're looking for jump scares or gruesomeness or even something pretty scary, this movie really doesn't do that. The best you can get from this film, I think, is a slightly unsettled feeling, just like a little creepiness because of the topic. But even that, it is really more about keeping that uh, mockumentary flavor. Yeah, and I think that I guess... It- I feel like something like this is going to have a very niche audience that's going to enjoy this movie. You would be an example of that niche viewer that likes something like this. I am probably an example of your more average viewer that wants actual horror. Uh, and Or if it is a mockumentary, still a plot within that mockumentary. Like you brought up this is Spinal Tap. Uh, there's a plot there. Right. Even though you're still staying like immersed in the the mockumentary style of film, it's it's going somewhere in the story. I'm invested in what's happening to the band. If I was to say that there's something wrong with this movie is it is that there isn't really a plot. And most of the other mockumentaries that I enjoy do have a distinct plot. They just use the mockumentary format to convey it. That's how they tell their story. So yeah, I don't really have much else to say about this one, to be honest. Do you have anything else you wanted to bring up in terms of your plot analysis? Looking at this film as a writer, I think you can get some useful ideas from it on how to make a, a coherent, believable world. The fictional world that these people set up in the sense of a film and a world in which there is a cursed movie by this by uh, this film pioneer that surfaces once in a while and drives people insane. That is very well done. At no point watching this, even if you're bored by it, it does not take you out of that world. It's fairly well done. The use of actual footage and reconstructed stuff is again it's well done and as a writer when you're trying to do world building that kind of stuff becomes important you want to create a world that seems to be internally consistent and support itself if you are searching for a solid narrative not just an interesting techniques and some interesting ideas about the only saving grace you may have for this film is that it's short at 60 minutes and I'm not certain if I would have wanted to sit through a full-length film like this. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree they kept the world consistent that they built for the film. Um, they just didn't have a plot within the world. I mean, they tried a bit with, like, exploring who actually made this film. Was it George Melies or was it Victor Sicarius? And Victor Sicarius is a made-up person, but he's supposed to be, like, his protege um and he they think maybe it was him and so there was a little bit of mystery around that but they never actually solved the mystery of who made the film so again that led to a dead end of just speculation um but i would say that was if there was anything interesting about this and an attempt at a plot it would be that issue of the back and forth about who actually made the film well and that could have been what this film needed. Something at the end, something to wrap it up. A dramatic moment, a bit of cinematic punctuation, whether it is a resolution to a subplot you were talking about, or like a final last showing of this movie, it resurfaces and another crowd goes mad, but it goes mad on camera. Even if we never actually see the film, which, as I said, I don't have a problem with that. Do you think something like that would have elevated this movie? Maybe not make it a great film, but at least 
make it better, more satisfying for someone like you who is looking for a slightly more traditional horror movie. Yeah, I mean, the end, it just fizzled out with more of the same. Another interview of we don't know and we're speculating about who made the film and why it creates temporary madness in its viewers. I needed a grand finale, a punchline, something to reward me for enduring this film for 60-ish minutes. And I didn't get that reward at the end. Okay. Well, I am interested in hearing what your favorite scene is. That was, it was a struggle, but I ultimately decided that if I had to pick something, there was a series of interviews with this one guy who was an expert on witchcraft and the occult. And I like how they set the scene. It was him being interviewed and in the background you had a skull wearing a top hat and a candle and it was just subtly funny um and just kind of making fun of people like that and a little bit tropey uh but i I like how they set up that interview scene what about you jeff my least and worst favorite scene rating is a little different this time around which i will give after i ask you what your least favorite scene was ah okay so my least scene favorite scene is the end because as i mentioned earlier i endure lots of just speculation and interviews and build up of this film and never get to see anybody go crazy the film itself or or just some horrific ending that would have given me some satisfaction for watching this so disappointing i don't actually have a favorite or least favorite scene. What I will say is, if the premise sounds interesting, if a fairly immersive mockumentary, which delves into both real and fictional film history, but doesn't really have a strong plot and does not have a solid wrap-up where there's a really satisfying end to the story, that sounds like something you'd be interested in you'll like this movie. If you want a more traditional horror movie narrative, or even just a wrap-up of some sort, you'll probably not like this. And you might find the interviews and clips from films and all that boring. Yeah, I think this film is, is very much an acquired taste. It's like I don't know, sardines. Some people really, really like them, and some people don't, and there's not a lot of in-between. Yeah, I like sardines and anchovies. I do like anchovies. That's another one that people, and I like them on pizza, and that's one of those things that I think people either really like or really hate. Um, So I I don't think you're going to get two and a half uh, pandas on a film like this. It's either going to be low or higher, Um, which let's get to the panda rating. So Steph. On a scale of zero to five pandas, what would you rate Fury of the Demon? Not surprising. I gave this one panda. I got bored with it. I, mean, it. I only gave it a point because it started off promising and I was interested. The first 15 minutes, I'm like, okay, this is an interesting concept. But then it totally lost me as the fake interviews increased and I didn't get the story arc I was looking for. And so, yeah, I, unless you're that niche person that really likes all of what Jeff just mentioned previously, then I would skip this one. What about you, Jeff? Well, I actually am going to be that person who gives it 2.5 silent screen pandas. I like the structure. As I mentioned, I like the world building. I like the seamless way that the fictional and non-fictional are integrated. I find the overall concept to be fascinating, both from the secret history point of view and the dangerous film point of view. But clearly there are issues with not having a traditional narrative and not filling it in with at least something exciting happening on screen. I don't need to have a hero running around solving the mystery of uh, Millier's Fury of the Demon, but I would like to see something happen. It's a good example of a mockumentary, but there are definitely better ones out there. We have mentioned a number of them. 
I would recommend that people seek some of these other films out. And even the kind of offshoot of the mockumentary, the found footage films, there are a bunch of good ones out there. There's plenty of movies that use this style and use it to better effect. I just liked elements of it enough to give it a passing grade. Okay, well, there you go. Is This film has just got to be the right flavor for you to enjoy it. So, Jeff, what do we have coming up next week? So next week, we're going to be checking out Triangle, currently streaming on Tubi. Stream On is a production of Steph and Jeff Wright's Media. Reproduction without written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved, 2021.